Thank you, uh, Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Mr Tobe Shah, uh, and Senior Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Professor Simon Biggs, members of Senate, uh, distinguished guests, Nungas, the custodians of this land for tens of thousands of years, as a, as a professional marine scientist, uh, you're an integral part of the masterpiece that I'm personally grateful for. Graduates, congratulations to you all, sincerely. Uh, you've expressed uh, a, a high level of uh, gratitude and, and uh, for the opportunity uh, and, and, and making it here to the, tonight. Keep it up. You, you, you've made your parents and mentors at UWA absolutely proud. I, I'm lucky to be here. I've, uh, this, this is a chance to wear a mortarboard for the first time, even though I've uh, had a... So I feel like I'm actually graduating alongside you. Uh, so thanks for that opportunity. Um, my mum, going back to uh, the start, I guess, my mum was a nurse just up here at Charlie Garden Hospital. My dad's an engineer from, from, from UWA as well. They met down here at Steve's Pub. Um, they cleared a bit of June out in the sticks up in Carinup and had five kids. Uh, and I grew up pretty much in the bush, surfing down a trig beach, fishing, snorkeling, diving, and, and absolutely immersing myself in nature. So I developed a, a real, real appreciation for the natural world. Um, my pop used to uh, come down from uh, six months up at Ningaloo and share these stories about this, this, this absolutely amazing environment that not many people actually knew about. I uh, used to talk about the whale sharks and the manta rays and the turtles. Um, and this giant trevally that he one day caught and it towed him around the lagoon and he uh, took uh, hours and hours and hours and hours to actually get this giant fish in. You know, real old man in the sea stuff. Um, he took Ernest Hemingway a little bit too literally. Fish, he said, I love you and I respect you very much. But I will kill you dead before this day ends. Now, I, I don't like killing fish. I don't like killing animals at all. Um, of course, Ernest Hemingway, uh, he, he wasn't so literal. That fish is a challenge that you guys face, uh, carving out your future. Landing that fish is your future success, and getting there is now a lot easier for having gone through the journey that you have gone through in earning your degrees today. It has taught you real grit. It's daring to try. So conserving Ningaloo, it, it became my purpose from a very young age, um, but I was never a magnificent student. It was B's and C's. I even um, failed my English exam, um, but through the wonders of scaling, I got scaled up and I managed to <laughs> raggle my way into our UWA. Um, I couldn't stand my English teacher. <laughs> he uh, he, he uh, used to brag about this award-winning author, Tim Winton. Um, I don't know whatever happened to that English teacher, um, but these days I'm, I'm helping Tim, Tim to write a documentary. Um, so always remember, never let your failures nor your detractors deter you from pursuing your dreams. It is these dreams chased, there's great risks taken and failures experienced along the way that create you and your road to success. As Tim says, we rise to a challenge and set a course. We take a decision, you put your mind to something, just deciding to do it gets you halfway there daring to try. So try. Seize your opportunities. Um, I got into UWA and after a couple of false starts got going with uh, the sciences. Uh, one would think that following a passion for the natural world and, and gaining the opportunity to become uh, a marine biologist would be enough. All the hard work was done and I could just cruise into adulthood. Um, but I got my ass kicked. I promptly failed plant biology, I failed statistics, I failed environmental law, and I very nearly failed chemistry, which was a full year unit, which would have been a disaster, I would have been. The university had me on notice. 
I was too busy partying while I should have been working. Eventually I got the hang of it um, and graduated with a couple of good marks. These close shaves, loss of a few dear friends along the way and other challenges instilled in me to never take opportunities for granted. It takes a lot of energy for you guys to create them, for the people around you to help you to, to put yourselves in that position. So when they arise, be ready to make the most of them. <laughs> Do what it takes, but don't be scared to walk away at times. Uh, upon graduation, I grabbed a death trap of a 1969 Land Rover and took off up to Ningaloo. So I was uh, just graduated uh, to begin my marine biology career. Uh, I became a labourer, a cleaner, an itinerant surfer, kitchen hand, uh, and did my marine science in my spare hours. Sometimes you have to do what it takes to get you to where you want to go. Do it. That first year got me pretty broke. Um, it also got me a volunteer place on an Australian Institute of Marine Science cruise, um, and that led to a contract on the Great Barrier Reef where I was... Uh, the, the government, uh, Australian government thought I was uh, responsible enough to be able to monitor the health of the Great Barrier Reef day in, day out. Hundreds of, uh, hundreds of dives, counting thousands of corals, um, absolutely um, working myself uh, to the bone. Um, a bad dose of Ross River fever and uh, chronic fatigue and uh, I was exhausted and I wasn't enjoying life much. I headed back home to WA uh, that stint in the mecca of my discipline was, was short-lived. Um, life is short. Take, take, don't, don't, don't take your uh, health for, for uh, granted. Maintain it, both mental and physical health, um, as you go. Admit your mistakes and learn from others. I quickly found my way back to Ningaloo, but with a lot more experience behind me. So uh, this time I wrote a report that went to the uh, Premier and, uh, promptly reject and, and the Premier promptly rejected a, um, a, a marina development, which was proposed to go ahead up there and uh, expanded the marine park and, and chucked in some sanctuary zones and um, initiated some of the uh, World Heritage listing where we see it today. Um, one man um, lost a million dollars in that ill-fated proposal. Uh, that man ended up um, with my mum. So I caused a, a man to lose his life savings and he is now my stepfather, basically. <laughs> uh, upon meeting him for the first time, he was the first to admit he was wrong. And uh, I was grateful for the chance to learn what humility looks like and, um, you know, I, I, I was grateful that I didn't have to learn that lesson necessarily myself. Accept <laughs> uh, your shortcomings, your failures and defeat with humility and uh, your successes even more so. You never know when we'll, you will be on the opposite side getting your ass kicked. Perth is small. Uh, relish, in, relish in your authentic, authenticity. That sounds like some kind of um, Tony Robbins motivational speaker's quote, if ever I heard one. Um, but it's true. Despite failing plant biology and statistics, I returned to UWA and completed a PhD um, at the School of Plant Biology. In advance, using advanced multivariate statistics to, to study complex marine communities. I used my PhD to help me set up an ecotourism company taking people out to see whale sharks. It gave me an opportunity to share my passion with people. One customer in particular stands out. Her stepfather forced her into the waves when she was a young child and she basically drowned. She got revived, she survived. Um, she came out with lasting brain damage. She hadn't been near the water for 30 years. She came to me because she wanted to overcome three decades of utter terror that had tormented her in her dreams. Within moments, we had her swimming alongside a whale shark and she was 
in complete and utter peace. She was in the water there longer than any of the tourists and uh, from that day on she's uh, still, still swimming around. Moments later she was on the boat crying out of sheer relief for having that burden lifted. There's been plenty of others. <laughs> There's been plenty of others. There's been people who have uh, come out with their loved ones to experience uh, a moving moment before they, they pass away. There's been pol politicians and executives. There's been families and retirees, Japanese film crews and kids shows coming out. And I've been able to reach millions of people with a message of hope and, and, and uh, marine conservation, something that I've always dreamed of. It is moments with people changing their lives that matter most, make a difference. That it makes all the blood, sweat and tears worth it. Never give up in your pursuit of a better world. Your, your authenticity and sincerity are your strongest force and will show through in the end. 97% work. So you'll feel like the world is constantly against you at times and uh, it's taking forever to catch up with where you're at. Um, when my back is against the wall, I tend to go surfing. Uh, I duck off for a quick wave whenever I can. Surfing surfing's a bit of a weird thing because uh, just 3% of your time's actually spent surfing along on a wave. 97% of your time is spent paddling your guts out. It's spent avoiding clean-up sets. It's spent fighting against currents and uh, competing with a bunch of other frothing surfers that want that same wave as you. <laughs> what your degree has prepared you for is that 97% hard work. This is the reality of your life, and the quicker you accept that, the quicker you can achieve change. When you finally catch that wave, like you have tonight, Take a moment to share the stoke with those around you. These precious moments can be few and very far between. And if I can succeed, a pretty average student who failed in things I now specialise in, then you too can. Work hard and strive to be the best versions of you. You'll hit personal barriers. You'll confront death and illness, emotional and mental hardship, but no, never, never underestimate your ability to problem solve, your resilience, your ability to adapt to hardship, nor your ability to overcome your own personal limitations. Ignore the doubters, but always take on critical advice whenever it's offered. Share the journey through the tough times and enjoy, and enjoy those moments of success when they come. Look after yourself and your loved ones because you never know when you'll need, to, need it in return. And for you and for all of us, there is so much hope. And then you'll be gone. Um, as we speak, my partner's getting test results that will likely confirm a pretty horrible, horrible sort of uh, trajectory. Uh, she's only 44. Um, most people's impact on this world dies with their grandchildren. A mere 50 years later, and your life will be forgotten. Those who influence reaches beyond their loved ones are the ones that strive to put their dreams for a better world into practice and leave a mark on society. People like, you know, Mandela and Einstein and all these people, Darwin and Hawkins and some people from this university, like Marshall and Warren, people who transcend their real challenges and overcome those barriers, helping humanity as a, as a, as, as, you know, helping people address the big problems and, and leaving a lasting legacy. I'm so excited at the possibility and the possible legacies that you might leave. Helping humanity as a, as a geographer, as a biomedical scientist, as a geneticist, as a sports scientist, you're in fields that can make a real difference to society, use it. And I ask you, what is going to be your legacy? I challenge you to now go forward and make it happen. Thank you.